the perspective mapping the convexity of a function is preserved okay now we will use this thing to prove that Kullback lever divergence is a convex function so consider a function now that is your fx is negative log is negative logarithm that is negative log x which is a convex function as you can see the curve of this function it is a smooth decreasing function and as you can see it is a convex there's no need to prove as you can visualize that this is a convex function and now consider the perspective transformation of this negative logarithm so perspective function of a function f is just a function g of variable x and t such so that g is t times f of x over t therefore taking the perspective function of negative logarithm will give us this function that is negative t times log of x over t with domain r plus plus that is both t must be greater than 0 and the variable x must be greater than 0 so this is a perspective and this is also a convex function since our original function is a convex function t greater than 0 is just a requirement of definition of the perspective functions so this is a perspective function of negative log x and since negative log x is a perspective function therefore we conclude that this perspective function is also a convex function and this negative t times log of x over t is known as a relative entropy of variable x and t so this gives a relative entropy between the two distributions or two vectors or two variables we can say so this term negative t times log of x over t is known as the relative entropy of x and t so this is the relative entropy of two vectors suppose you are having two vectors u and v and both are n dimensional positive vectors that is each of the component of u and each of the component of v is positive then the relative entropy is defined in this way summation of all i from 1 to n ui log of vi over ui this is also if we, we, just, we can just take this negative sign inside this log and we get this thing summation of all i from 1 to n ui log of ui by vi so which is also a convex function since it is a sum of convex functions so this is the exact mathematical model of Kullback lever divergence between two vectors we are having two n dimensional vectors u and i which are positive so the Kullback lever divergence is given by summation of i from 1 to n ui log ui over vi negative ui plus vi so this is a convex function because this is a convex function and this is a linear function basically Kullback lever divergence is a sum of convex functions plus linear functions and therefore Kullback lever divergence is a convex function so this is also the measure of deviation between the two positive vectors in this case it will give a measure of how two vectors are different from each other so if you suppose so suppose now if you want to minimize the Kullback lever divergence between two distributions or two vectors we can say then we can solve this problem very efficiently using convex programming so now in the second part of this lecture we will discuss about the information theory and machine learning so this is very basic introduction to information theory uh, the first is information gain analysis we will use this thing to relate it with the entropy and then we will also consider in upcoming lectures the dimensionality reduction using information gain analysis we will also consider several other algorithms like CFS subset evaluator PCA based dimensionality reduction and uh, uh, and one of them is information gain analysis so we will again tackle this problem in much detail when we will discuss the actual dimensionality reduction and this lecture is mainly focused uh, about the Kullback lever divergence okay so the second thing is entropy 
it will be used in the derivation of Kullback Lieber divergence and we will discuss two types of entropy that is number one is discrete entropy and second is differential entropy discrete entropy is used in cases where your variable is a you are having discrete random variable and differential entropy is used in the cases where you are having continuous random variable so suppose you are having two distributions one is say uniform and another one is non uniform then entropy for the uniform distribution is relatively more than as compared to this non uniform distribution and likewise for non distribution for non uniform distribution it is relatively less okay that is as your distribution becomes more uniform suppose you are having m states for a variable x that is your variable x can be in one of the m possible states and if the probability of occurrence of each state is 1 over m then this distribution will have more entropy as compared to the distribution which is peaked around a particular value say suppose a particular state x i has a probability of occurrence 1 and rest all are 0 so this distribution will have the minimum entropy and the one which is more uniform the entropy will increase for that distribution so this is very general statement that on occurrence that an occurrence of highly improbable event we receive more information than gained by the occurrence of highly probable event now suppose if I tell you something that you already know suppose you are watching a lecture of machine learning and if the topic is something that you already know then you will gain nothing but the topic is something that you don't know then obviously you will gain something so this is very natural thing that on occurrence of highly improbable event we receive more information then gain by occurrence of highly probable event and this we will see in exact mathematical form in the upcoming slides so now let's begin with the information gain so we will denote the information gain by the symbol h this is the information gain and let and now let us consider the two unrelated events by unrelated i mean the statistically independent event that is by statistically un independent I mean that the conditional probability of event X and Y is same as the multiplication of independent probability of both the events that is P of X comma Y is PX times PY the statistically independent events so suppose you observe both these events and now you want to calculate the total amount of information gained by observing both these events so this is equal to hx plus hy that is the information gained by observing both the events x and y is same as the information gained by observing the event x and information gained by observing the event y so this is equal to the summation of the information gained by observing the event x only and information gained by observing the event y only so if these two are independent statistically independent events or unrelated events then this relation will hold so in short this expression means the information gain by observing both the events x and y is same as the same as a summation of information gain by observing the events independently so information is noted by H and now consider and now we will consider the discrete entropy case and then we will tackle up the problem of continuous that is differential entropy so consider discrete random variable X and say it is coming from a distribution say P of X so the information mathematically is represented in this form that is HX is negative log px with the base 2 so the reason for using the base 2 is that the unit of this information is in bits so the information received in this form is measured in the in the bits that is we say that we have negative log px bits of information on observing the particular state of an event x so now the question arises that how we are measuring this information or on what background are we measuring this information so suppose a sender wants to 